Hey guys, what's going on? I'm here at PLR with Aaron. Today we're having a look at my crank, my new crank, to go into the RB25 in my stager. Brain no work. Seven, seven o'clock. Seven, seven, seven. So the cranks come back from being machined. What happened? They took the original oil pump collar off there. Yeah, so it's not actually a collar from the factory, it's just part of the crank, so they grind it down so we can fit a collar on to repair it. Gotcha. So at the moment it's just nice and round, uh, and there's meant to be a little flat spot on there, isn't there, basically? Yeah. So. This is great if you're going to run a dry sump. <laughs> can I run a dry sump? If you want to spend the money on it. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what we're going to do now is fit a new, like, wide style oil pump collar on it. Get to use the hydraulic press. Well, I don't get to, but Aaron gets to when we get to watch. Cool, I've watched so many videos about presses. Jesus. Old diesel gudgeon pin that we've machined for fitting RB collars. So yeah, so the whole the whole purpose of this is to, coffee in the shot. So the whole purpose of this is to be able to fit that wider uh, oil pump collar onto my new crank so that I don't have any kind of uh, hectic oil loss when I'm sitting on two step for 10 minutes at a time, right? Yeah, because you know, People two step for 10 minutes. I probably won't do that, but but I would like the added <laughs> safety of just knowing that, you know, my, my oil pump drive isn't going to be a problem. So let's have a look at this. So big. Nice and shiny and smooth. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so that's that's about sort of twice the width of the factory oil pump drive, isn't it? There's your standard one. Right, okay, yeah. So where is it? There. So see there, that little that little lip across there or ridge, that's what drives the oil pump in a stock setup. Whereas the one that we're fitting to my new crank is, is sort of twice that width. So added safety margin. More engagement. <laughs> so this type here has little signs, waves. Sine waves. Sine waves. Yeah. They kind of act like little teeth to mesh into the, the oil pump itself to spin it instead of just being a flat spot. So now Aaron's going to lube up the shaft. That's, That's all men need to do. <laughs> We've got to get it nice and clean before we fit this collar. Don't want anything in there except for grease. It's definitely a lot shiny out there. <laughs> yeah, the, the machine polished surface looks really nice. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to fit it with the press originally because the inside of this is smaller than that. <laughs> we give it an interference fit to help reduce any chances of it going anywhere. Because like, theoretically you could run this without putting any anything to locate it and stop it from turning, but the chance of it turning is not zero, so we're going to grub screw it after. So when we fit these, we like to orientate the flats in line with the number one journal there, just because it makes it easier for us to put the grub screw in to hold it in place later. It doesn't actually matter where it points, it's just this is the convenient place to put it. No. This press is kind of loud, so you probably won't hear anything. One collar fitted. Cool, see you later. That's cool as. Yeah, we use this because we've machined a little step in it. Because the collar's actually mm. shorter than the original there by just a little bit. Yeah. Now we're going to go back to the other side of the workshop and drill holes in it. Which way? This way? Got to get the caffeinated water. That way. Caffeinated water. 
also known as coffee. <laughs> I love this place, this is so sick. This is why I fit it that way, because this is the way the crank likes to sit. Oh, yeah, I getcha. <laughs> Right, so then you, you drill the hole at 90 degrees to the flats. Yeah, so yeah. straight in here where nothing needs to go. Yeah, so obviously you can't put it in here because that's your seal area. Right. You don't want to put it in there because it's thinner. So you end up drilling further through. When you think about it, any hole you put in here makes this snout assembly on your crank weaker. <laughs> that's a spotting drill that's so designed to be your starting yeah that's cool so that's the depth is it yeah so you can just wind this up to set a depth so you don't drill too far yeah it does have this conveniently metric scale on it yes good good the only bloody thing here that has metric on it <laughs> that's metric too that one And it didn't go through. Woo! They put some grease in there too. Yeah, it's just a like bit of molly slip stuff. cutting compound. It makes it cut nicer, yeah. get a nicer thread. Tap lasts longer. Yeah. It's especially important on small taps like this. They're very easy to break. I'm just going to check the depth before we put Loctite on it and fit it for the final time. It's like I measured it. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's a blind hole, you got to put some on both sides. A blind hole, what's that? So it's got no opening in the bottom. Oh, okay. Because okay. if you just put it on the grub screw, see how it's got a nice coating after I run it in? Yep. So if you just put it on the grub screw, the air coming out will push it mm. all back out the top. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you've got some in the thread as well, it'll push that down. As well as the air pressure pushing the rest of it up. Cool. Just make sure it's nice and tight, not that it's going to be able to come back out once it's in the pump. And once it's in, you just give it a light file off, and then it's done. Oh wow, literally just file the head off. Yeah, it's just the oh, very wow. top lip that sticks up. So now it's nice and smooth. So now what, Aaron? Uh, we're going to spin it on the crank balancer to check its balance. Then your crank will be ready to go back in, we'll just have to double check bearing sizes and assemble it. We're just cleaning the corrosion protection off so we can spin it on the balancer. It's just a lot easier to do in here. Why do you need that stuff off to put it on the balancer? Uh, so we're going to rest it on the journals, on a couple of blocks. So, leave it on there, it can get stuff stuck in there and mark up the journals. I didn't even measure that. <laughs> You're a professional. Just balance that many RBs, Matt. <laughs> So we've got the motor down there, chuck a belt on it. Wow. So that senses the RPM and what angle you're at. Oh, that's the sensor. So that just senses how fast it's spinning and the angle. There's actually weight sensors inside these verticals. Just basic DOS-based computer. 
This is cool. This is something we do in metric. Yes. We measure all the offsets and stuff in metric. Cool. This is one problem we always fucking have, is the belt slips. <laughs> Got no traction, bro. So before, when, we're, when I was setting this up, I just got to tell it the distance between this vertical and the first counterweight radius and the same distance on this end and how far apart they are and the how thick the journal is so it knows how fast to spin the motor. Come on, speed up. It tells you how fast it's currently spinning. That's going to look flickery as. Yeah, a little bit. Not too bad. So what do you need to get it to? So it checks at 500 RPM to see if it's really far out. Yep. If it's good, it'll spin it up to 750. So, you know, average idle speed for a lot of things. Oh, yeah. A little bit low for some cars, a little bit high for others. But it's a good, like, average test yeah. spot. Yeah. This belt just needs replacing because it's got traction issues. So you're kind of wiping the... the, the uh, kerosene off it. Yeah. Have you ever been up higher? Just keeping the oil and shit off the belt so hopefully it keeps spinning. Okay. That's pretty good. What does that mean? 0.1 and 0.9 of a gram. So you need to take 0.1 of a gram off this end and 0.9 of a gram off that end. Which is not going to happen. Right. Okay. <laughs> I can take a little bit off this end just so it's closer to even. Does, does it matter that much? Uh, usually on a performance engine we like to see no more than a half a gram different end to end. Yeah, right, and okay. under one gram. That's fine. 0.8 of a gram difference end to end, so that's why we're just going to take a little bit off this end. Gotcha. It with an air liner shot. Yeah, he literally attacked it. That's sick. <laughs> and we spin it again. Outside of the belt's got a bit better traction. Oh, you flip it over. Yeah. Ah, oh, cool. So we've got one balanced RB crankshaft. Woo! That's all we had to do. So we're taking out the standard gallery bungs of the crank. It's just these little aluminium plugs, so we can clean it properly. Make sure there's no dirt or metal in there, so it doesn't do a rod bearing as soon as we start it. But the annoying part about these is sometimes you can drill them out, and you can just tap straight into them, but sometimes they're too big and you've got to drill it out for a larger size. So we're going to find out once we get them out. <laughs> what kind of crankshaft it was chosen to be. <laughs> Come on, you. They're just soft aluminium plugs that they put in. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say, that didn't take much um, force at all. And they push in like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're lucky the, the drill bit's going to grab them and pull them all out. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Otherwise we get this problem. Otherwise, you're going to go tapping around with pin punches to get the aluminium out of the gallery. It 
win. <laughs> Can't get it in while you're watching, Ravi. <laughs> Am I making you nervous? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so there is one crankshaft for your stage here. These RB cranks are normally really good. I think that's the first time I've heard you say anything good about an RB. <laughs> yeah, there's some redeeming qualities about them. <laughs> like how they sound. They do sound good. <laughs> so what are you doing there now, Aaron? So I'm just measuring some bearing shells. I'm just going to check against the crankshaft size and check that we're going to have the right bearing clearance. And if not, see what size bearing we're going to need to put in. Whether it be standards, extra clearance, or one thou unders. So what is left to go now? Uh, it just needs to be washed and put back in the engine. All right, so that's basically everything done to the crank now. Uh, it's had the new collar put on after removing the factory oil pump drive. Uh, Aaron's also drilled out the uh, little plugs in the crankshaft. Uh, so that we can like drain and clean out all the gunk, all the built up oil and dirt that gets caught up in there uh, over the years. That's now sitting here behind me. So Aaron's gonna clean that all out now and then refit those grub screws and lock tight them in so that they can't go anywhere. And that will mean that that crank is basically all set up, ready to go, all nice and clean. Uh, we also balanced it and Aaron got everything, yeah, balanced up pretty nicely. Very exciting times, we've got this crank almost ready to go. Uh, yeah, Aaron's just, just got to finish cleaning it and um, yeah, we'll slap that back in my RB25 as soon as uh, I get a chance and as soon as uh, Aaron can order the right bearings, which is what he's measuring at the moment. He's trying to work out what size bearings to fit uh, in my engine with this crank now being the size that it is and all that sort of stuff. So as always guys, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying all these videos about uh, this RB25 journey which uh, I've kind of unexpectedly had to go on. Uh, it does mean a lot that you guys are watching and thanks so much to Aaron once again, for all his help. No worries, man. <laughs> See you guys in the next video.